What's going on guys? Hope you all are doing great. This is the part two of our GUI chat app. I said part two because we had a part one where we went through all the basics, the foundation. But this part two right here is where we actually write code. So if you know the basics of networking architecture and also understand networking, understand the OSI model, and you also understand UDP and TCP, then you don't need to watch the part one. But if you don't understand this, I would advise you to watch it. This is the first time we're actually going to write some code. So you can easily also just start from here if you want to get to the code part because you already understand all those basics. The IDE we're going to be using for this project is PyCharm. You can use whatever IDE you want, but yeah, I'm going to use PyCharm for this. All I did was I created a project and I gave the project a name of chat room app. What you need to do after creating your project and giving it whatever name you want it to be is we need to create our server.py. So this is where we'll put all the code for the server side programming. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually create my server.py. And the way you do that is you hover on your project name, you right click, then you hover on new and you can see the options right here. We're going to click on Python file. I'll give it the name server. You can see that right now we have a server.py file. Now that we have our server.py file, we need to import the necessary modules for this. And the first module we're going to import is threading. The second one is we're going to import socket. Next, we're going to import arch parse. And the last, we're importing OS. And in the description below, I'll leave a link to a web page. And in that web page, all you need to do is copy the command and you paste that command in your terminal. And when you do that, you have the library installed, the individual library. I'll leave four links for the four different libraries we have here. Make sure you install them if you don't already have them installed because nothing will work out if you don't have them installed. Now that we've done that, we're going to create a class and we'll call this class server. Inside this class, it's going to take an argument of threading dot thread. I'll call it underscore init dot self. And inside here too, it's going to take a host and also a port. Now we call super dot init. And for sure, I'll explain the code. Let's just write it first. We create an empty list. We call it self.connection or connections. The next we say self.host is equal to host and self.port is equal to port. The next thing is we create another function called run. And for now, just put pass in there. Now guys, let's talk about some threading basics. We're using multi-threading to allow multiple pieces of code to run concurrently. Our server class inherits from Python's threading.thread class, which makes it possible for it to create a thread. We need to define the logic of our server thread in the run method. Okay guys, now let's talk about some socket basics too. A socket is an IP address plus a port number pair. An IP address identifies a host. However, a host can be many different applications running at the same time. Now that we've understood a little bit more about threading and socket, what we need to do next is we need to start defining our thread logic by adding the following run method. So now in this run method, what I'm going to do is I'll say soc is equal to socket the socket and then we say socket dot af inet you put a comma right there and then we say socket dot sock with a capital sock stream so you see that there what we do next is we say soc.set socket opt. I can see it right there. Inside here we'll call socket 
dot sol socket what we say is we say socket dot so underscore reuse addr now that we've done that we say soc dot bind inside here we put self dot host and also self dot port what we do next is we'll say soc dot listen and we put one and right here in the addr we should also put one so we put a comma one what we do next is we can easily print and the message is going to say listening at and say comma sock dot get sock name so now let me just explain what we did here the first thing we did is we created a socket dot socket object and the socket takes two arguments it takes the address family and also the socket type the af.inet family is used for the IP networking, while the soc underscore stream socket type is used for the reliable flow controlled data stream, such as those provided by TCP and also UDP. But the thing is that this also requires a packet based socket type, which is soc underscore dgram. What we did next is that we used the so underscore reusable ADDR to actually allow the server to use the same port after an old connection was closed. Normally you would have to wait for a few minutes, but with this, we don't have to do that. After that, we use the bind method to actually bind the socket object to the socket address on the server machine. And the bind method takes in a tuple in this format, IP address, which is a string and port number, which is an int. Finally, what we do is we use the listen method to indicate that this is a listening socket. What you need to know is that TCP uses two types of sockets, listening socket and also connected socket. After calling the listen method on the socket, it makes it become a listening socket. But what you need to know is that this doesn't also pertain to the actual transfer of data. We'll need to create an entirely new socket whenever a client connects in order to send and also receive data. So you know what, let's continue. So what we do next is we create a while loop and we say while true. And I'll put a comment here. What we're doing here is we're accepting new connection. And the way we do that is we'll say SC and then we say sock name. We create a variable called sock name and we set that equal to sock dot accept what we do next is we actually print so what we do next we'll use an f string which is like this so a string literal we'll say accepting a new connection from and then we'll say where we're accepting it from and then we'll say to a new connection from and then we we'll use the curly bracket I'll say sc dot get peer peer name. After that, we'll say two, and for the two, we'll say sc dot get sock name. Now that we've done that, I'll put another comment here. What we need to do is we need to create a new thread. The way we create a new thread is we'll create a variable called server socket. We'll set it to server socket. I'll put a bracket there, we'll say sc. After that, we'll say sock name and self. And the way we start is we'll say server socket dot start. And after we've done this, what we do next is we actually add the thread to an active connection. And don't worry about this. We're going to define this later on. But for now, just leave it like that. What 
always say is we'll say self dot connection dot append and then we append server socket. Now it's time to actually print and what we'll print here is we'll print ready to receive message. To receive messages from they will say sc dot get peer name. Now that we've done that, it's time to actually Now that we've done that, we're going to create a function called broadcast. Set that to self. And then message and also source. We'll start with a for loop. So we'll say for connection. In self dot connections. What we're going to do here is we're going to send to all the connected clients except the source client. And we do that by saying if connection dot sock name is not equal to source. Then what we do is we'll say connection dot send I send message we'll create another method for actually removing the connection so we'll call this remove connection and it's also say connection as its inputs or its argument all we say here is we'll say self dot connection connections dot remove and what are we removing connection yeah guys so i'm going to take a break right now and i think you should too take a water break i'll be releasing the part two of this server side today or tomorrow at most so then after we finish with the server side we can focus on the client side and finally the gui if you're new to the channel please subscribe so you can get the other series and like the video guys because it really helps me out with the youtube algorithm and I'll catch you on the next one.